So how does this pro- how does the process work? I I like how do, how does this even begin? Where does it start? Is it you going for modeling and then and you have an agency and then they push in that direction? How does that how does it even start going? to the direction of, oh, now I'm, I'm competing for Miss Florida, Mrs. Florida. And I, and I get it. My mom had always had me in modeling when I was younger. So I've always done modeling just here and there for fun. Um, but it was never like something I pushed on and I never did pageantry when I was younger. It wasn't until I competed for this title that I had joined pageantry. And it was specifically because I wanted to speak on human trafficking and wow. Yes. So people, I, when we moved to Florida, my husband, and I do construction, as you mentioned, and I do real estate. So when we came here, I was looking up all these facts about Florida, just trying to get to know the state. And I learned that we're number three in the nation. So I start talking to people about, I start volunteering in different um, organizations. And as I learned more about what's going on, I learned how big it is, even in Naples, the city I'm in. And people just kept dismissing me. And it was really part of my language, just pissing me off. I was getting so frustrated because I was just like, you guys can sit here and talk about politics for hours. But when I want to talk about something that's happening and something you should just be aware of for your kids sake, you want to shut me down because you don't want to believe it's happening in our beautiful little city or state. Right. And so I was like, well, where's somewhere I can go that people will listen to me more and I'll get more publicity on this topic. And I was like, well, a pageant. So I typed up and found out there was a Mrs. Pageant. I decided to jump in two weeks before the state competition. I had no idea. I've never been in a pageant before. didn't know what I was doing. I didn't place. And I said, okay, that's fine. I'm going to prepare and I'm going to come back next year. And I did. And then I took the title. And since then, I've been able to travel all around the state of Florida, speaking on human trafficking from Pensacola to Naples, all over. And it's been amazing. I've been able to do exactly what I wanted. And I truly think God had a plan set out because then... Sound of Freedom came out, so it's just all really fallen in line with my goal. What um, wow! So you use this platform specifically, if I heard you right, just so you can speak and be heard more about the the sex trafficking and the human trafficking. Yes. Uh, what 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 brought that? What brought that to your attention? I've learned of human trafficking since I was a little girl when I watched a movie, and it just wow. always stuck with me. What movie was it? Do you remember? Oh, my gosh. You know, my mom was just talking about the other day. She was like, I'm so surprised you remember that movie. And I'll have to ask her what the name was and send it over to you. But it was it wasn't taken. Everyone was like, was it taken? No, it it was about a girl who gets taken um, by an organization. And her dad spends decades trying to find her. By the time he finds her, he can't even recognize her, not only because she's a full grown adult, but she then became the female ringleader for the exact organization that was trafficking her. And that just blew my mind. I don't know how deep you go with the, uh, you know, the last couple of years, it seems that's really come to a, um, it, it's more, people are more aware of it. I don't know if they're, they're doing more, but I've never seen such a, a great awareness of the human trafficking. Oh, um, absolutely. And I think the movie Sound of Freedom really helped. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people, they get very fixated on certain things though. So a lot of people have in their mind that sex trafficking is the only thing. A lot of right. people have in their mind that because of the border, that's why we're having all these issues when we're not actually the highest percent of people that are getting trafficked are U S citizens. So it's right here in our own state. It's not people coming from the border, but right. a lot of the time we want to deny what the truth is to make ourselves feel better on what's going on in our world. Um, you know, and. Unfortunately, labor trafficking is a huge thing. Beggars are a very huge thing. Tim Tebow is actually talking about a beggar that they saved and the mom was getting frustrated because the girl wasn't coming back with enough money. So she actually burned out one of her eyes in hopes that that would make her raise more money. So there's so many different ways that people are trafficking um, humans. And a lot of it, unfortunately, is from those closest to us. It, it, do you get um, do you get worried at all, or do you get freaked out? Before you're even worried, does it freak you out? How many people possibly know about this that are in the inside, meaning judges, police officers, government officials, 
congressmen, senators, um, all your lo- and and what what's even more disturbing and disgusting, and I don't know this for a fact. I started learning about social services mm-hmm. and how certain organizations were created specifically to lure you in. I mean, what what better place to find someone? Hey, are you lost and you feel like uh, I'm not saying suicide or what? Give us a call. Do you feel someone's? And then you call and you don't even know that's the trap. Yeah. Um, have you have you come across any of that in your lifetime that you're just like, oh my God. Um, you know, to be very blunt, I have gone down so many rabbit holes on different conspiracy theories, planes coming from people that are very high up in our mm-hmm. White House with illegal children that have gone missing. So I um, you know, I I like to have a lot of faith in God and his plan. But unfortunately, just as much as God's working, so is the devil. And 100%. a lot of people and a, a big problem too is, and that's what we do at Paths of Freedom is we try to, we're not just saving these girls by providing them a safe home, but we're working from the inside out. So we're providing them counseling. We're helping them face what they're going through. Because unfortunately, a lot of these children who get trafficked, it's a chain reaction because they think that's normal. So they then go on to do it because they think that, that this is a normal part of life instead of realizing that that's not okay. And so it's, it's a sick disease that people end up falling into. It's, and it's, it's very unfortunate. And unfortunately there are a lot of higher up people that I don't have a lot of faith in, but you know, we have to pray for the kids that are being trafficked just as much as we have to pray for the people who are causing the evil. Yeah. So, um, you're mentioning the path to freedom. I discovered it through a friend and the friend invited us and she's on the board and I, I, that blew me away too, where you have, so what Tatiana is explaining, there's a place here in Naples where, um, they, the saved girls or the girls that have been in the situation, they are now housed and you try to basically bring them back in, into society or, or work on them through therapy and all, years and years. And it seems to be pretty well protected. And what I mean by that is they're very careful who they let close to that environment. Like I can't, I can't just, my wife and I both like, oh, we want to get involved. And even my wife, who you know, she goes to church, she says Christian, she reads about that. They were like, yeah, nah, just stand over there. You can help from there. And then we'll do, just, you, you yes. stay over there. We got it from here. And then they, we're, they very, we're very protective. And at the yeah. same time, you know, a lot of people come in and they want to get involved and they want to, get involved in the nitty gritty, right? They want to see the survivors. They want to see, hear the stories. Um, but unfortunately, these girls have had people in and out of their life and we don't want to show that revolving door as much as we want to protect them as well. And sometimes volunteers will come in and they'll realize, okay, this is actually a little too hard for me to handle. So we do make the process a little lengthy. You have to go through courses, make sure that you're certified and, and can be there with the girls. So you're pretty, you're pretty tied in with them then you're, you're, because I, there was a moment where you were, you were given such an incredible, uh, I hate saying the word speech, (laughs) speech, but you were, you were talking, you were talking at the event. It was extremely moving and you, 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 I'm going to get, I'll get emotional. Talk about you got emotional for a a second and I, I crumbled. I instantly crumbled. Um, and the reason why I crumbled is because when you seemed that you cracked is because it was a very hands-on personal moment or person that rocked your world. Yes. Um, and I'm assuming that's the case. I don't know if you want to no, there, there any is, of that, but you know. It's a person that's very, very close to me. Um, you know, they're, they're family to me. And yeah. unfortunately, she was born a meth baby and... I like I had mentioned in my speech, um, her maternal family would burn her with cigarettes. Yeah. They, you know, she was sexually abused, subject yep. to child pornography. And there was a lot of things that I didn't understand why she would react a certain way that her mm. um, adopted family didn't understand. 
And I remember them putting her in counseling. And after seeing the way she reacted after those sessions, I didn't really understand why they had her in counseling. So I asked them, I said, you know, are these, is this really good for her? Are you almost triggering those memories? Because my thought was, if this happened to her when she was so young, will she actually remember? And are you now just helping her remember? But the child psychologist explained that if something traumatic was happening to her and she remembers a word or, you know, a no, a, an object like sting, for example, was a trigger word for her, mm. that her brain is still remembering parts of the memories, parts of the trauma and the emotion, but she couldn't fully remember the full memory, but was still learning how to navigate those reactions. Mm. Um, and we later learned that her maternal family would refer to a sting as a cigarette burn being used on her when they would punish her. So mm. all these different things started unraveling and when I was speaking about that up there, I mean, I could just, and she was just down here visiting me um, not long ago. And I just picture her little face and it's just, it's such a vivid memory in my mm. mind. And just thinking that that's just one little girl who's gotten saved. And there's so many others out there that, you know, we don't even know of. It's just, it's hard. It's hard to not get emotional. Check out the Bruniverse every Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. If you can't wait till then, sign up for Patreon and get it two days early, along with other exclusive content.